Being in nothingness delves into the nature of human existence, freedom, and consciousness. Being in nothingness is a monumental work that lays the foundation for Sartre's philosophy of existentialism. The book explores the fundamental questions of human existence, focusing on the concepts of being, consciousness, and the experience of freedom. Sartre argues that human beings are defined by their existence and their freedom to choose their own values and actions. One of the central themes of the book is the examination of the nature of consciousness and its relationship to the external world. Sartre introduces the concept of being for itself to describe human consciousness, which he sees as an active, self-aware entity constantly engaged in the process of self-creation. He explores the tension between the subjective experience of consciousness and the objective reality of the external world. Sartre's writing style and being in nothingness is dense and philosophical, requiring careful reading and contemplation. His intricate arguments and nuanced exploration of existential concepts can be challenging, but they offer profound insights into the nature of human existence and the complexity of human consciousness. And Quiet Flows the Dawn follows the lives of several generations of the Cossack family, particularly the protagonist Grigory Melikov, against the backdrop of historical events. Sholokhov's narrative provides a rich tapestry of love, war, and social transformation, capturing the essence of both personal and collective experiences. One of the central themes of the novel is the examination of the human cost of war and revolution. Sholokhov depicts the brutal realities of armed conflict, the disruption of traditional ways of life, and the tragic consequences that befall individuals and communities caught in the midst of political turmoil. Through the lens of the Melikov family, the novel explores the profound psychological and emotional impact of war on both soldiers and civilians. Sholokhov's prose is marked by its vivid descriptions and its ability to evoke a strong sense of place and time. His detailed portrayal of the Don River region immerses readers in the beauty of the landscape while also conveying the harshness of rural life and the challenges faced by the characters. Only Yesterday follows the protagonist, Isaac Kummer, as he returns to Bucksacks after a 20-year absence. Through his eyes, Agnon skillfully depicts the complex interplay of tradition, modernity, and the forces of change that shaped Jewish society in that era. The novel captures a profound sense of nostalgia, as Isaac confronts the memories of his youth and grapples with the transformations that have taken place. One of the central themes of the novel is the examination of cultural and religious identity. Agnon delves into the tensions and challenges faced by the Jewish community as they navigate the forces of assimilation and secularization. The novel highlights the struggles and choices individuals face when confronted with the clash between tradition and modernity, providing a nuanced portrayal of the complexities of Jewish identity. Agnon's prose is marked by its lyrical beauty and attention to detail, creating a vivid and immersive reading experience. His evocative descriptions transport readers to the streets of Bucksacks, allowing them to feel the vibrant atmosphere of the town and to intimately understand the lives of its inhabitants. The president is set in an unnamed country that closely resembles Guatemala during the era of authoritarian rule. The novel follows the intertwined lives of several characters, with a particular focus on the tyrannical president, known simply as the president. Through their stories, Asturias masterfully depicts the devastating impact of dictatorship on individuals and society as a whole. One of the central themes of the novel is the exploration of power and its corrupting influence. Asturias exposes the abuses of power perpetrated by the president and his regime, highlighting the widespread human rights violations and the erosion of individual freedoms. The novel raises important questions about the nature of power, the consequences of unchecked authority, and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of oppression. Asturias' writing style in The President is characterized by its poetic and imaginative language, incorporating elements of magical realism to highlight the surreal and nightmarish aspects of life under an oppressive regime. Snow Country is set in the remote hot spring town of Yuzawa, nestled in the snowy mountains of Japan. The novel follows the complex relationship between the wealthy Tokyo dilettante, Shimamura, and the geisha, Kamako. Through their interactions and introspections, Kawabata delicately weaves a tale of unrequited love and the elusive nature of human emotions. One of the central themes of the novel is the contrast between urban and rural life. Kawabata skillfully depicts the isolation and serenity of the snow country, painting a vivid picture of the stark beauty of the landscape. The novel explores the dichotomy between the fast-paced, modern city life and the slower, contemplative existence of the rural mountain town, inviting readers to reflect on the impact of environment on human experience. Kawabata's prose is characterized by its lyrical and evocative language, capturing the subtleties of human emotions and the beauty of the natural world. His descriptions of the falling snow, the sound of a koto, and the delicate gestures of the characters add depth and richness to the narrative, immersing readers in a sensory experience. 
The Gulag Archipelago offers a chilling expose of the Soviet forced labor camp system and the atrocities committed under the regime of Joseph Stalin. The Gulag Archipelago is not just a historical record, it is a searing indictment of totalitarianism, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, and a call for truth and justice. Solzhenitsyn meticulously documents the horrors endured by millions of innocent individuals who were unjustly imprisoned, tortured, and killed in the Soviet labor camps. The book is based on Solzhenitsyn's own experiences as a political prisoner, as well as extensive research and interviews with fellow survivors. One of the central themes of the book is the exploration of human suffering and the will to resist in the face of extreme adversity. Solzhenitsyn delves into the physical and psychological torment inflicted upon prisoners, their struggle to maintain their dignity and humanity, and the extraordinary acts of courage and resistance that emerged from the depths of despair. Through his powerful prose, Solzhenitsyn compels readers to confront the darkest aspects of human nature and to reflect on the consequences of unchecked power. The Lost Honor of Katerina Blum tells the story of Katerina Blum, a young woman whose life takes a dramatic turn when she becomes the subject of a relentless media frenzy. After a chance encounter with a suspected terrorist, Katerina finds herself under intense scrutiny, her personal life dissected and distorted by the press. The novel examines the destructive power of sensationalist journalism and its impact on individuals' lives. One of the central themes of the novel is the exploration of personal freedom and the erosion of privacy in the face of media intrusion. Bull skillfully portrays the dehumanizing effects of public scrutiny on Katerina, highlighting the violation of her rights and the loss of her individuality. The novel raises important questions about the balance between the public's right to know and an individual's right to privacy. Bull's writing style in The Lost Honor of Katerina Blum is characterized by its sharp social critique and its blend of realism and irony. Through his storytelling, Bull exposes the sensationalism and hypocrisy of the media, shedding light on the manipulation of public opinion and the dangerous consequences of hasty judgment. The eye of the storm revolves around the lives of the members of the wealthy and dysfunctional Australian family, the Terrys. The novel primarily focuses on the aging matriarch, Elizabeth Hunter, and her two adult children, Dorothy and Basil. As Elizabeth's health deteriorates, the family is forced to confront their unresolved conflicts, emotional vulnerabilities, and the facades they have built to shield themselves from the harsh realities of life. One of the central themes of the novel is the exploration of identity and the masks individuals wear to navigate social expectations. Patrick White expertly delves into the complex inner lives of his characters, exposing their fears, desires, and the deep-seated insecurities that shape their interactions. Through his profound understanding of human nature, White reveals the fragility and contradictions that lie beneath the surface of seemingly successful lives. The Eye of the Storm is characterized by White's rich and poetic prose, which immerses readers in the vivid and atmospheric world he creates. Romanian O.M. Olaf is a literary masterpiece that spans several volumes, chronicling the life of Olaf Johansson from his impoverished childhood to his adulthood as an aspiring writer. The novel examines the complexities of human existence, the pursuit of artistic expression, and the impact of social and political forces on individual lives. One of the central themes of the novel is the exploration of social and political change in Sweden during the early 20th century. Ivan Johnson portrays the tumultuous events of the era, including the rise of socialism, the labor movement, and the impact of World War I. Through Olaf's experiences and interactions, the novel sheds light on the social inequalities, political conflicts, and economic struggles of the time. Romanian O.M. Olaf is characterized by Johnson's lyrical and evocative prose, which captures the essence of the Swedish landscape and the emotional depth of the characters. His vivid descriptions and nuanced characterizations allow readers to intimately connect with Olaf and the people who shape his journey. Johnson's writing style combines realism with a touch of poeticism, making the novel a compelling and immersive read. Aniera takes place in a future where Earth has become uninhabitable, and humanity has embarked on a spaceship named Aniera, destined for a new home on Mars. The novel follows the journey of the passengers and crew aboard Aniera as they face unforeseen challenges, including the loss of their course and the resulting existential crisis. One of the central themes of the novel is the exploration of human nature and the search for meaning in an increasingly bleak and desolate universe. Harry Martinson delves into the psychological and emotional struggles of the characters aboard Aniera as they grapple with their isolation, mortality, and the loss of their connection to Earth. The novel raises profound questions about the essence of humanity and the nature of existence itself. Aniera is characterized by Martinson's poetic and lyrical prose, which captures the vastness of space, the emptiness of the void, and the fragile beauty of the human spirit. His vivid imagery and metaphors create a haunting atmosphere, 
immersing readers in the existential journey of the characters.